Hello, this is Bryson Englin from Sonoma Partners with the third video in our series about Microsoft Dynamics CRM for architecture, engineering, and construction firms. So in the first video, I talked about navigation. In the second, about accounts and account management. And in this video, I'm going to talk about opportunities and a go-no-go -no -go process. So before, when we looked at the account form, I broke it down into several sections. And you'll note that the opportunity form looks very similar. So there's the name of the opportunity up here and it tells you what type of record it is, opportunity. Over on the right is our scorecard, and in our scorecard on opportunities, I've highlighted who is leading this pursuit, how much money are we getting, what will our margin be, and are we in a go or no-go process right now. Similar to the account, I'm going to skip this section for a second, over on the left, this column is the meat and bones of this opportunity. This is the data related to this opportunity directly. In the center, we've got Yammer, Microsoft's enterprise social collaboration tool. System posts, where the system gives us updates about this opportunity. Activities, all the activities that have ever happened on this particular opportunity. On the right, we've got related records, so stakeholders, the people from this client, Kaiser Permanente, who are working on this opportunity with us, the biz dev team, the folks who are on our side who are working on this opportunity, and finally, the competitors on this opportunity. So that's just a high-level view of what's going on on this opportunity form. The thing that I want to highlight first, though, is the business process flow UI, the section I, I said I was going to come back to. You can see it with these different stages in orange and gray. And just to highlight that, I'm going to collapse this tab, that chapter of the opportunity, so that we're just focused on the Process Flow UI. Give it our full attention. So the Process Flow UI is unique to Microsoft Dynamics CRM. And you can think of it as a roadmap to a successful outcome. It is your map to success. So on an opportunity, what we've said is that in our business, in the, the fake Sonoma AEC company, our opportunities are broken up into these five stages. Qualify research, go no-go, -go, propose, and close. And in each of these stages, there are certain pieces of information and certain tasks that need to be accomplished in order to move on to the next stage. And if I don't actually fill out this data and I try to move to the next stage, the system says, uh-uh, nope, you can't do that. You're going to have to do these things that we've decided as a business are a part of our process. So this makes it so that onboarding new people is a lot easier because they can see right there, these are the things that they need to do to be successful. And for managers and executives, you can enforce that business process. You can say, these are the things that you need to do. These are the pieces of information that you need to capture, which means that your dashboards and your reports reflect the data that you need because it's enforced. They can't move on without filling out that data that you're going to want for your reports. From an IT perspective, it helps you enforce the business process without having to build workflows. You basically just, from the front end, design this and push it onto the system. It's pretty easy to do. So in our fake Sonoma AEC company, in the qualify stage, we have these steps where we're supposed to answer these questions. Do we have a relationship with them? Yes. Are they high profile? Yes. And you just go through and you answer these questions. And as you answer the questions, what the system is doing in the background is assigning a number to each of these. So it's scoring this particular stage and each step within the stage. And it's basically saying, if you say yes, we're going to add five points or 10 points, whatever you want to assign to that. So that by the end, once I click the last question, a score is generated. So now I've enforced a business process that allows me to sort of say, OK, we can assign a score to each of these questions. And if we score really well, then I'll move on. And if I look at this summary area, you're going to note there's that total qualify score. And if I hover over, you'll say, oh, that's our scoring matrix. A 60 is great. We should move on. So I'll go ahead and do that. In the next stage of research, you can see that I have more questions to ask and answer. So I'll go ahead and answer these. Yes, yes, yes. We'll just say this is the perfect project. And the system can generate a score for me as well. And that makes it so that I can decide I can move on or I need to go ahead and talk to people about this. So, so far in this process, we've basically just been asking questions and answering them. And we can go back to the account to get more information and to get a sense of, should we move forward or not? The next phase is going to be the go, no go phase. So I'm ready to do that. Let me go ahead and switch over to go, no go. Now in this stage, I have very specific things that I need to do and I need to actually track these scores. Now in our fake AEC firm, what happens is, 
This go no go process is made by an area manager as opposed to me being a biz dev person. So that area manager actually has a separate form and you'll note that there's a master opportunity form and there's a go no go form. So I'm going to actually switch over to that manager in a different browser and I'll show you that go no go form and I'll walk through that process with you. So I've switched to a different user and this user is Connie and she is uh, a manager above me as a biz dev person. And you'll note that this is a different form. And on this form, we have different data that's being tracked. So on this form, she's really trying to make a decision. Should we move forward or should we not? And she can go back and she can look at the different things that I've done in terms of scoring this particular opportunity and all the information that I've entered. But really what she's going to do now is she's going to walk through some questions and answers of her own in order to get a sense of should we move through with this. So one thing I do want to highlight is that her form is different, but it still has that relationship pane in the center. And you can see that this is where the system has used workflow in order to do some updates on this. So moving the probability from 0 to 10% from the qualify stage to 10 to 20% in the research stage. And so the system can track what I'm doing as a user, and it can deliver updates to Connie and anyone else based on that. So in Connie's world, she actually goes through this project and asks questions about uh, what's going on with this. And this could be in a deal review. So she could actually sit across from me with her laptop or her tablet and she could ask me about these questions or she could research them in the system and she could say, have we dealt with this client before? Maybe it's a yes, maybe it's a no, you know, we could do whatever we want it to do. And as she answers this question, it'll assign a score to each question. So we answered yes here, and that will generate a one. And if I answer yes on the next question, it will also generate a one in the system. And she could keep going on through and keep getting yeses added to all of the questions that she has. So you'll see that there are questions that are about the client. There are questions about the project and different business considerations that are related to what will this project do for us as a firm. Now, this is just my sort of generic go, no, go process that Connie goes through. You obviously can create your own, you can build that into the system, and you can have your own scoring mechanisms. But at the end of the day, after we answer all of these different business questions and we come up with a score, Connie's going to be able to know, should we go or should we not go? So I'm going to pretend like I've actually filled out all of those questions. And I'm going to have the system go ahead and generate a score. So I'm going to do a little trickery and I'm going to sort of fast forward in Connie's process here. So I'm going to say that Connie's got a perfect score on this one and so she decides you know what this is going to be a go. So she's going to go ahead and say go and then I'm going to flip back to me being Bryson and you'll see that reflected on my record. So I'm going to close down Connie and here I am back on Bryson's record. So she's made a go decision so I'm just going to refresh this record real quick just so that we can see the updates that she did to our particular opportunity here. And once that go process has been made, you'll see that this form transforms a little bit. So it's the same form. I'm not using Connie's form, I'm using my form. But you'll note that now that we're in a go phase, whole sections have opened up. And we have new system posts that tell me that we've assigned different tasks to Christy, to Sherry, to me, and to Mike. Those tasks are created in the system. You can see them here. And those tasks, because CRM and Outlook talk to each other, are now in those folks' Outlook. And I've actually gotten an email that the system generated once Connie said go. And that email tells me that, hey, this has been a go. You as the biz dev person, you should go ahead and move forward. So the system, based off of what happened in the process flow UI, has generated tasks has generated system posts, and then also has opened up this form. So there are whole new sections like the details section over here. That didn't exist before. Before Connie told us to go, we weren't tracking the primary and billable client. We were just focused on Kaiser Permanente, the parent organization. And before Connie said go, we weren't tracking milestones and financials because we weren't trying to sort that out to get us a sense of what's going on with this from a proposal perspective. But now we have a place to put all of those estimates ahead of actuals, and we'll see those actuals when we move into the project. So another thing that this is going to do is it can track the projects that we've completed that are similar to or analogous to the opportunity. So here the system has rules that says, hey, is this a client that we've done work for before? Is this a sector that we do a lot of work in? 
Is this maybe a type of project, in this case a, a hospital or a clinic that we've done a lot of work with before? And if so, if all of those things happen or some of those things happen, why don't you add projects to this opportunity record that are similar to that so that you can use them in your proposal generation? So you can say, hey, we're bidding on Kaiser Permanente Oakland Clinic. A good project to include in that proposal is the Kaiser Permanente Oakland Medical Center that we did a couple of years ago. So that's one thing the system can do for you. The other thing that I wanted to highlight really quickly while we were here was just looking at the documents related to this particular opportunity. So this is a native integration to Microsoft SharePoint. SharePoint is the document management tool that you have with Microsoft. And this will allow you to have all of the documents related to this opportunity living up against this opportunity and also residing in SharePoint, which means some of the documents you can have a website that the client can go to and they can see those documents. Some of those documents you can keep behind the firewall. And this native integration, it's out of the box, makes it so you can do things like collaborate on documents, use version control, you can set up those client facing portals so they can download and look at documents, all kinds of different things that SharePoint gives you. And at the end of the day, we're actually still on this opportunity record right here. So the next thing that I want to do is I want to actually, you know, pretend like I've moved through the next stage of propose and close. I'll pretend that we actually won this business and I'll move on to the project that is related to this. And we'll look at how we talk about projects and manage projects in Microsoft Dynamics CRM. So this is the third part of our video series on Microsoft CRM for AEC firms. And the next part we'll talk about projects. If you have questions, feel free to contact us at sonomapartners.com. Thank you.